All right, let's get started. Thanks for coming, everyone. Hopefully, you can all see my screen now. My name is Josh Osborne, um, and today we're going to be looking at the Cadimage Keynotes tool. Uh, before we start, just a couple of uh, housekeeping things about the webinar. Um, I will be answering questions at the end of the webinar, so if you have any questions, just put them into the chat window as we go, or wait until the end and ask them then, um, and I'll cover off anything that comes up then, um, or I will answer you later on via email, uh, whichever works better. Hopefully you can all hear all right. Um, we will be making a recording of this webinar available afterwards, so if you want to go over it again or share it with someone else, um, you'll have a link <coughs> that you can get to do that. It looks like uh, from the poll that most of you are not actually uh, using the Keynotes tool at this stage, um, so this will be this should help you guys, uh, hopefully, because it's mostly going to be a demonstration of how it works. Um, and for those of you who do actually own the tool or are using a trial of the tool, hopefully this will get you started and um, get up and running actually using it. So I'm going to be using a kit 18 um, for this. Hopefully that's what you're all on. Um, and I've got the latest version of the Keynotes tool installed. All right, so Cadimage Keynotes. <clears throat> the main purpose of the Keynotes tool um, is that it is it provides an entire database of Keynotes inside of Archicad. So rather than just giving you a system of storing notes um, or having a convenient place to sort of copy and paste things out or something like that, uh, the, the Keynotes tool is a complete database of your notes so you can put in just references to notes um, and then later turn them into a full note uh, and that sort of thing. You don't have to mess around with putting in different, um, pasting in different chunks of text or whatever to convey the same information. If you put in just a key, you can later change that to a title or a title with a description or something like that. We'll see that a bit later on, but that's one of the main areas is that it's actual it's an actual database containing all of your information about each of your notes. Um, so you use it to annotate your drawings in Archicad as you go along. Um, and the main reason for doing this is to reduce errors um, so that you know that when you put a note on something, you don't need to worry about if you change that thing later or if you change the note later, you know that all of the, say all of the layouts that that appears on or uh, any of the details about that note, you don't need to worry that those need to be updated manually or anything like that. It's all just taken care of. Um, and it also means uh, you get greater accuracy simply because you'll be because they are much easier to use than copying and pasting in bits of text. You'll use them a lot more. Um, so with notes in the Keynotes tool, you can show a full note without reference. You can show a reference key only without a note, so it's nice and short. Uh, you can use attribute attribute-based keynotes, which we'll look at later on. Um, essentially, it lets you use the attributes that are inherent to your Archicad elements um, and bases the keynotes on that. Um, and you can also schedule your notes. So we'll go through and look at all of those as we go. So here's an example of the different types. We've got just a key, the zero, zero here. We've got the title, which shows just the title field. We've got the title and the key. Uh, we've got the spec ref. And we have a detailed setting which shows the key, the title, and the description, and has a frame on it as well. So there's a bunch of different ways you can choose to show your notes, um, and you can change them on the fly as you go. And again, because it's a database of notes, uh, they contain this key and this title and this description and this spec ref, and you can choose to show whichever part of them you want at any stage. Before we get started, though, here's the model that we're going to be working with. The Keynotes tool uh, is not particularly dependent on how this model looks or anything, but we have a model uh, which is fairly normal looking. Uh, I've got a couple of section and elevations here, uh, which we'll put some notes on later, and there's a 3D view as well, but I won't bother with that. But 
but we're going to start on our ground floor. So the first thing to do with the Keynotes tool is to bring up the Keynotes palette. So if you have the tool installed, uh, just click on the CAD image menu and go to Keynotes and click Keynotes palette here. And you can see it pops up a floating palette here. If you'd like, you can dock it somewhere. I can't dock it at the moment because I'm on a Mac uh, and so the palettes don't dock, but you're, if you're on a Windows machine, that will dock nicely and take up uh, a space wherever you want it to go next to your project map so um, i'm going to leave it for here for now and this is what we'll be working with the majority of the time we're using the keynotes tool so at the moment you can see at the uh, there's three notes zero zero title field zero zero title field oh one sorry and zero two title field oh two nice and basic um, so let's just have a look through the various settings that we have here so we select our key in this top part here, and then down below we can see the settings related to that key. So we've got the key here, the title, spec ref, uh, and a description in here. There's multiple lines available for adding a description in there. <clears throat> and as I select different ones, you'll see those fields there change. And so to edit those, we can just jump in here and start typing. And as you can see, as I'm typing in here, the changes are happening immediately in the list of notes up above. It's reordered because I changed the key to be below those. Obviously, these couple of notes that I have here at the moment are not particularly useful, though. So in most cases, the first thing you're going to want to do is import some useful notes. So I'm just going to delete all of these. <clears throat> and I'm going to import some notes. Now we can use the Keynotes tool it uses a .keynotes file as its default format. Uh, this is an XML based file, um, but it's essentially specific to the Keynotes tool. Um, so this is the one that comes with the tool. However, if you want to import something from a database that you have or from an old version of Keynotes or something like that, you can import a CSV or text file. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at the CSV import. Got a CSV file here. If you choose a CSV to import, you'll get a, um, a import dialog which lets you just check, which lets you set the way that it's going to import the notes. So you can set it to merge or uh, use keys that you that are assigned to it. You can set how the file is set up, and then you set up the structure to bring in. So it's detected that there are this many columns in the CSV file. Uh, and it's showing some sample data, which is just the first field. Um, and then the data application, which is what we've set here. So it's detected these automatically, and it looks like it's bang on for all of those. But if your column names aren't exactly what we're expecting here, you can change them to be what you think they should be mapped to here. Uh, and if you've got any extras, just set them to unused. So if we hit OK from here, that'll import. Uh, I don't actually want to import that CSV. I'm going to go with this Keynotes file. So import that. Um, it's going to give us a quick review panel to show everything that's coming in. Blue notes and notes that are new. And these italic notes and notes that are deleted. So those are the ones that we saw before. I'll hit OK, it imports the notes and then just does a quick audit to make sure that there's nothing funny going on in my import, duplicated notes and that sort of thing. And so now you can see I have a tree structure here in my Keynotes palette. So I can open that out and see the various bits of the notes that I've imported. And if I select them, you can see all of the settings that you would expect. So in the palette, the first thing you probably notice when you come in here is that we've got a nice search box up at the top here. You can just use this to search for anything in your notes. Um, so if you come in here and start typing, it immediately filters the list to only show notes that contain that word. Uh, so it's nice and quick. Um, if you're looking for a certain note, instead of having to sift through the categories that you want, you can just search for the one that you want, and you can just hit that button there to clear it. We've also got 
down here under Keynote Editing. If you click on the heading that says Keynote Editing, you'll change into the non-editing mode of the Keynotes palette. So you can see we no longer have the buttons New, Delete, Import, Export or Restore. It's just showing us the notes that we have. We can't edit them anymore. Um, so this can be handy once you've got your notes all imported and ready to go. You can get yourself a little bit of extra space there uh, by turning off the editing. And the last thing down here is the label content. So this is showing you the actual content. So a label you have selected. We don't have any selected at the moment. So uh, there's nothing displayed there. So let's add some select a note that we want to use. Now, before I start putting notes down, I should mention that I'm just going to be randomly selecting <laughs> notes uh, as we go through here. I'm not choosing meaningful notes. So if you see me apply a, a paving note to the fender of this car, it's just because I randomly chose it, not because it, it's some deeper meaning. Um, obviously, you will be making sensible choices as you put your notes down there. So, <clears throat> Let's select a note that has uh, some data in it. So 20502, we've got items for salvage or reuse. Got a nice chunk of description here. So the first thing I want to do is go and grab my label tool. And then double click on the note that I want to place. And now I can just click and place it. Let's apply it to this sink as if it were a normal label because it is. It's a arcade label element. So as you can see, it's placed down a label saying 20502 on it. Now if I double click and choose on something else and then draw another note, same thing only it's using the next note that I've double clicked on 20503. So it automatically sets the label tool to use whatever you just double clicked on. Let's place a couple more. Okay, so those are all placed down uh, and they're showing just a key. So <clears throat> and now if we want to change that up, place some notes with a bit more info, we can go into our label settings. And we want to look for Catamage Keynote Label Settings. So I'll open that out and you can see at the moment it's set to just display the key, which is what we were seeing there. So what we'll do now is we'll change it to just display the title and we'll go ahead and place some more and as you can see now very much the same the label uh, does roughly the same thing but now it's showing just the title instead if we want to change things further we can choose any other set of options in here so uh, let's just go and select one of the ones I have placed already and change it and now <clears throat> just coming back again to the database idea because this even though this was placed as just the key 20502 uh, because it is part of a database it knows that it still has all the other bits of note associated to it so we can change it to not show the key anymore and it'll still know what it is. So if I turn on title and description and turn off key, it just changes to the thing that it should do um, without having to mess around with going and finding that extra bit of data. Let's leave the key on. It's a bit more sensible. So we've got a couple of other settings in here which we can look at. Um, obviously you can turn on the category and the spec ref in here as well if you like uh, and you can also add a header if you wanted to. Got some text format settings here so you've got the alignment of the text. Uh, you can choose to put bullet points on if you like. As you can see I only have one note in this label uh, but if you had multiple notes in it bullet points would add a bullet point to the front of each one. Uh, and then we've got list separator settings if you want to change that from a comma. Now we can set the way each part of the note displays. So the key is displaying using Arial. Let's just make it bold as well. Title, let's make it italic uh, and black. And the description. Like 
that and then my frame and apply a different kind of frame. Let's just put vertical edges on there. And I think I've got my color settings wrong, which is why those changes to the color didn't work. Okay, and you can see that's updated now so that it uses my different text styles for each note element um, and it has that frame on it that I chose. So you can make the different parts of the note display differently if you want to as well, which is handy. Um, and you can do this for a multiple selection of notes. So obviously I just did it to the one um, just then, but if I select a couple of them, we can go and change them both and that will set them both to show the same type of thing. You'll also notice that we've got some purple hotspots on here which we can use to manipulate the layout of the note when it's actually placed. Um, so you can fit it to things that it might need to fit to. All right, so that's nice and easy. Just placing one note by double clicking on it, having the label tool selected and drawing a label. The next thing you can do, obviously, is to do that, but with multiple notes. So let's just come in here and choose site surfacing. Uh, that's the wrong button. Sorry, I'm on a Mac and I forgot the button to hold down. Choose those four. Double click. And as you can see, it's placed down four notes this time. So if I jump in here. You can see the keys and the titles for those, and if we wanted to turn off the bullet points that we saw before, you can see those too. All right, and now that we actually have something a bit more decent, you can see in the label content setting here, something a bit more sensible, so you can see the four notes that are in this label. And now that we've got something in there, uh, we can start working with it. So if I go back and select one of these single ones, you can see it's just got the one note in it. This one's got four, uh, and I can manipulate this now from here if I like as well. So if you've already applied, sorry, if you've already placed a label with some notes in it, you can modify the way that that is done afterwards as well. So let's just come in here and take site surfacing off. And let's select services and add that in. So you can just modify them on the fly as well as you go. Uh, and you could also hide the note if you like. Um, that's not doesn't really make any sense in this context because we specifically place this note, but we'll get to that with attribute keynotes. You'll also notice there's a tick box at the bottom here uh, for live edit. Uh, live edit is what we were just doing now. So as you add and remove, you can see the changes live. But if we turn that off, uh, you can change to a manual edit mode. So if you select your label then and go get, shows us what's in it. We can remove the things that we want. Oops, I've already got that one in. Change the way this is set up and then hit set and that will do a sort of a manual way of doing that instead. Uh, and we can also use the plus and minus buttons here. So uh, as you can see this one here, I've got the three notes, but if I select this one up here, which has the single one, and hit the plus button on it, you'll see that adds in just the one I had selected. So you can <clears throat> you can just insert notes uh, one at a time using that method as well if you like. But the live edit is probably what you'll use in most cases just because it's quicker. Um, but if you are doing things like editing a selection of notes uh, that have different things in them, then using the, the not live mode, the manual mode, sorry, uh, and using get and set and plus and minus will give you a bit more sort of granular control of that so you can do exactly what you want it to. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. The next thing that we will look at is some attribute notes. Um, so as you know, in ArchiCAD everything is made out of attributes. Uh, all elements have attributes, walls have uh, a composite assigned to them quite often, or a fill at least. Um, they've got a material, that sort of thing. Um, and so what the Keynotes tool can do is it can assign notes to specific attributes. So 
let's just quickly have a look in here and see using this composite here exterior block 20 series stone finish all right so if i click on the cad image menu and go to keynotes again and go attribute keynotes you can come in here and oh goodness i've forgotten what it was already <laughs> sorry very stone finish okay Okay, so let's select that. And now I can tell it that that composite inherently has a couple of notes. So let's just assign those to it. There we go. Click OK. Now, obviously, we don't want every single thing uh, in every case to show up its attribute keynotes all the time. Um, so that has done essentially nothing. If I select this, it looks the same as it did before. There's no obvious changes in the makeup of the wall. Uh, after having done that um, so what we want to do now is oops. <clears throat> create a label so cat image keynotes create label and as you can see the three walls that were part of that group have now all been labeled using the attributes that we assigned to that composite. So, and now I can select that label and I can do the things with it that I was doing before. If I can actually select it, that is, there we go. So you can see it has all of these notes in it and we can modify them and edit them the same as we could before if we'd like to. Um, but because it's coming from the attributes, <clears throat> the way that uh, it works is that we can hide them and show them. And those hidden ones will just disappear from view. If we hit show, they come back. So you can use your attribute notes in conjunction with uh, manually set notes for elements, uh, or you can just ignore attribute notes entirely and just do everything manually. So that's applying labels to things. Now, obviously, um, just having labels on everything is not the end of the story. The next thing that you want is you want to be able to see them on, on your layouts uh, and you want to be able to meaningfully show what notes you are using. So let's jump over and have a look at our layout sheet here. Now that I've let it update, you can see it's showing all of the notes as you would expect it to, um, but they're all over the place, so it's kind of useless. So let's just change back to the view, and let's make all of the notes a bit more basic looking. Okay, so we've got a nice concise set of notes on everything now. And now we can click on the CAD image menu and just put a schedule in. So CAD image, keynotes, create schedule. Now we get the option here to uh, apply it to all layouts or just the current one. I'm just going to apply it to the current one because I don't have to have, don't want to have to uh, wait around applying it to everything when we're just looking at this one. Um, you can also set what notes to show. So you can set it to show all keynotes, which will just put down every keynote in your project. Uh, sorry, in your keynote file. Uh, you can say only keynotes used in the project, so that'll place everything that has been used somewhere in the project. Uh, or you can say only keynotes that are used in this specific layout. So that's what we're going to choose for this one. Click OK. And uh, it will always use the top left by default. Um, so it's placed down all of the notes that we have in this view into a nice schedule here. Now we can manipulate this uh, to fit the view. Um, So we could shimmy that over there so that it fits down the side. Uh, or you could 
change it so that it goes across the top or something like that. Uh, but the point is, is that it's detected all of the notes that we have in the view here um, and has placed down a nice schedule of those. Now, if we jump into the settings, you can change most of the way that this looks as well. Um, so at the moment, you can see it's showing all of the content for everything, um, but you could pare that down a bit if you want to can change the header there, obviously it just says notes at the moment, but you can make that say whatever you wanted to. Uh, and then we've got text formatting op options very similar to the settings that we had in the label. So the way the paragraph is set out, bullet points if you want them, uh, and then separate text styles for each of the parts of the notes. And then some settings for the frame. Uh, this is a bit different to the label setting, obviously, because it's more than just one thing that it's showing. So uh, we've got the frame on the that goes around the schedule. We've got the way that things are set out inside the frame. So if we had a multi-column uh, schedule, this would set the way that those appeared there. Uh, and then we've got some settings just about the gutters between columns and the <clears throat> and the borders and margins and that sort of thing. Uh, anchored to the top left corner, but if you want that offset from somewhere else, you can change that there. Uh, and the frame style is just the settings for the frame pen, frame lines, sorry. So that's the schedule. Now the next thing that you might want to do, um, obviously this is great for showing just the bits that are on each view, um, but if you want to set up a sort of, there's probably a term for this, but let's say an index layout or something which just shows all of the keynotes that you've used in the project. You can do that as well. So um, let's go with this one. Just wait for that to update. So we go to this layout here and we'll create a schedule again, but this time we'll say, only the keynotes that are used in this project. So it's going to schedule all of the notes that are in this project. Obviously, we only have the ones that we placed in floor plan. So it's the same schedule that we saw before. Um, but if you have a lot more notes, which you will do, this can take up an entire page. So you can just place down a schedule that shows everything being used in the project, um, which can be really convenient as well. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty much it, really. The, the the tool is, I guess, complex uh, in the sense that you can put a lot of data into it and it can manipulate a lot, but it's it's fairly basic in the way that it works. It, it holds onto your notes, it lets you place them, it lets you schedule them. It's pretty straightforward the way that it works. Um, now that we're done um, with our notes, say we're at the end of our project or we're starting a new project that is similar, um, you can also export your notes as well. So just hit the export option. Uh, you can set it to export everything or just the ones that you've used. Um, and that will let you export to a Keynotes file or to a text or CSV file as well if you want to get it into some other software um, or into an older version of ArchiCAD or something like that. So that will let you continue on with the same note set. And that's pretty much all I wanted to go over. Nice and easy. If you've got any questions now, um, just put them through and I'll try and answer those. Um, if you have, if, sorry, if you haven't used the Keynotes tool already, uh, you can get a trial version of it on our website. Just go to mycatimage.com slash free trial, uh, and that'll let you sign up and get a free trial of the tool. It'll last for, I think it's 30 days. Um, and you can get up and running with that. You could use the recording of this webinar to um, figure out how to get going with that once it's installed, or you can just uh, go with <laughs> go with what you remember. Um, and we also have the knowledge base, uh, which you can find on our website. Just go to catimage.com and look for the support tab there. That will show you the knowledge base, and that has a full reference guide to how to work the tool. And the last port of call, obviously, is if you still have questions about something or if you can't get it to work the way that you want it to, you can always send us a support ticket by emailing support at catamagegroup.com and that'll come through to our support team here and they can sort you out with whatever you need help with. <laughs>